ET really turned to the visual arts after World War II when they started a uh, curricular visual arts program, but also an interest in bringing public art to the MIT campus. And this is really, in many ways, to address a pressing institutional concern that would escalate as the Cold War developed, which was how to humanize scientists and engineers. The first major public art commission at MIT was the Great Sale by Alexander Calder from 1965. And at the time, Calder was a leading American artist and is today one of the best known American sculptors of the 20th century. Calder came to MIT in 1963 for a site visit and was very taken with the sailboats on the Charles River and really wanted to bring that sense of lightness and play into the campus. So you'll notice that even though this sculpture, the Great Sail, is uh, 40 feet high and has 3,500 pounds of nuts and bolts alone, it really has very few contact points with the ground and it really does have this sense of lightness allowing people to pass underneath. It also has the important function of creating this transition from the human scale to the massive gridded scale of IMPA's green building behind it, which is actually the tallest building in Cambridge. When you think of great public art collections, you think of cities like Seattle, New York, and Paris. What's amazing about the public art here on campus is that it's just that, it's on our campus, and it's open to the public, and it's free for everyone to come and to get inspired. When I was in high school, I actually worked at a sculpture park um, in the area, actually. And um, when I first visited MIT, I did notice that there was art everywhere. Um, and I thought that, I actually thought for a long time that all colleges had art everywhere. And it wasn't until like, later that I realized how lucky I was at MIT to have so much public art on campus. I, I think I didn't fully appreciate, I, you know, you kind of just assume that all top tier universities are going to have arts programs like the one that you went to, but um, MIT is really, really special, I think, especially the public art is, is, is really, I think, probably one of the best in the country, if not the world. Public art at MIT loosely operates in two modes. One are the more freestanding sculptures that you'll see as you walk around campus outside. And these are many of our older pieces, such as the Calder or our bronzes by Henry Moore. The other mode of public art in our collection can be thought of as art as public space. And these are really works that are meant to be completed by the visitor in the sense that they are to be experienced through space and over time. And it's really the presence of the visitor that completes the work of art. Now many of these works are cited prominently in public, but we also have some wonderful pieces that are more somewhat hidden gems, such as our floor by Saul LeWitt, which is hidden just off of the infinite corridor. You know, you're walking through these quarters of MIT and then you kind of turn this corner and you, you open the door and you see this amazing floor and um, there's catwalks everywhere and you can go upstairs and you can see the floor from above as well. So there's all these different vantage points to enjoy the artwork. When I was getting married, our photographers asked us, you know, where in Boston is special to you? And because my husband was actually a postdoc at MIT as well, you know, we immediately thought of MIT and I immediately thought of some of my favorite public artworks. So we ended up taking a bunch of family photos um, at the Soloit floor as well as at the big sale. People are surprised that MIT has such an extensive public art here on campus, but it makes perfect sense in that to be an engineer, physicist, chemist, it takes creativity. And to have such significant art around you at all times, it promotes creativity. So it makes perfect sense that we have these major pieces of art here on campus.